In this lesson, we're going to try to answer the question, what are the next steps that I need to take to help me move forward? There's an ancient spiritual analogy that talks about a tree with two birds. One of the birds is sitting lower down and the other is sitting quite high up in the tree. The bird that's lower down spends all of his time jumping around and enjoying all the pleasures of the tree, being enamored by the various colors and sights and sounds, enjoying the flowers, and all the different pleasures that the tree has to offer. And because he's jumping around and moving around so much, inevitably every now and then he gets hurt. And every time he gets hurt, he looks up and he sees the bird sitting higher up on the tree. And the bird that's higher up doesn't move around so much. He's just sitting there in bliss, enjoying this one fruit. And the bird that's lower down says, I'd really like to be like that higher bird. But then sure enough, a couple of minutes later, that bird that's sitting lower down is distracted again and moves around enjoying all the pleasures of the tree. And what I love about this story is that it represents the two ways that we can live life. We all want to live in bliss and harmony, but we don't really know how. And our mind is like the lower bird. We're constantly distracted by what the world has to offer us. And every now and then we get hurt. Every now and then we receive a trauma or life changes or does something in a way that makes us take a step back and think about what our life is really going to be like. What should our life be? And we look at the higher way of looking at life. We look at those people who seem to have it all figured out, who are blissful, who are calm, and we think, how do I get some of that in my life? How do I become like that higher bird? And that higher bird represents a higher mindset. The one that is still in the tree. That person who's still in the world, but isn't lost by it, knows how to live, how to play the game of life, knows how to just enjoy the fruit of life without necessarily getting completely entangled by all the different distractions of life. And we want this in our life. We want to be like that higher bird. We want to have that higher way of thinking, but a lot of us are afraid. We think, I don't really want to live like a monk. So how do we do this? How do we have a full life? How do we have fulfilling relationships and friendships and enjoy our hobbies and our pleasures? Well, this is what that higher bird is, the bird that's in the tree. And it's representing that we can still live in this world, but not be completely distracted. And when he's enjoying that one fruit, it shows that he is focused on a higher way of living. He's got a wisdom to him, and that's the wisdom that we need to try to understand. And the wisdom that the higher bird lives by is quite simply that I'm here, but nothing around me is going to last. All of these pleasures are fine, but this isn't the real fruit of life. This isn't the real juice of life that I'm here to receive. You know, sometimes when I go to the shops, I see a sign outside the store that says, closing down sale, everything must go. And I love that sign because to me, that's one of the best mantras of life. It's a reminder that that's really how life works. Everything must go. Everything in life that we have around us is one day going to leave us. And so it allows us to understand that when we focus on things around us that are temporary, they can only ever give us temporary happiness. And this isn't who we want to be. We want to be like that higher bird. And that higher bird is one who is comfortable with letting go. Comfortable with being in the tree of life, but not, not necessarily lost in it. And this is not how we've been taught how to live life. We've been taught that life is all about achieving, about gaining as many things as possible. And so we, tr we try to constantly collect things. We think that if we collect more things in life, that that's how we're gonna be more happy. And life has shown us time and time again that this isn't how it works. Things that we collect aren't going to last. 
And this is the truth that spiritual wisdom has always tried to teach us, that you can't hold on to things forever. Nothing ever lasts. Think about every single day that you've experienced. How many of those days have you been able to keep? You may be able to take photos, you may be able to capture your memories, but every single day has always had to be given back. Think about your breath. Even your breath, one that comes in, has to be given back again. Every inhale turns into an exhale. I'm always surprised when people take so much pride and joy in their birthdays. It's as though we believe that by getting one year older, we've gained something more in life. And I like to think that you're actually losing every single day. Every birthday, every year that you celebrate, you're losing something. In fact, you're at the oldest on the day that you were born. That's when you have the most amount of life left. And every single day and every year that you have a birthday after that, that's when you're getting one step closer. You're losing time. You're getting closer to death. We don't like to think about life in that way. We want everything to stay the same. We want life to be static. And what this does is this gives us this false sense of permanence. And we need to start getting comfortable with the idea that life is constantly changing. We need to be living in harmony with this flow of life. Think about life like a river. It's always moving, it's always flowing and always changing. So we need to become more comfortable with change. And in fact, this is what you've been doing your whole life. You've experienced so many changes before and each time you've shown the strength to move forward. When you were younger, you may have changed from one school to another. When you grew up, you moved from one job to another and changed your career. You may have moved home, moved into a new neighborhood, or some of us have even moved to other countries. There is so much change that we've experienced, even in our relationships. How many friends have come and gone? How many friendships and relationships have ended but that gave rise to new relationships and new friendships that have started. There may have been a time in your life when you were single and another point in your life when you were married. A time when you had no children and another time when you became a parent. Change is inevitable. And this is the same approach that I want you to take in all of your relationships. I want you to start looking at every single relationship as short-lived. And when we do this, we begin to understand that there is no person that we own and there is nobody that we get to keep. Even your own body needs to be returned someday. And when we don't think like this, we make the mistake of placing our hopes on other people being around, relying on them being there in order for us to be happy. And what we do is we're creating this false sense of stability, this hope that there is permanence in life when there isn't. I know that when we're grieving, it can be inconceivable to even think about breaking those bonds with our loved ones. But the truth is, the longer that we hold on to our attachments, the longer we try to control the situation, the more it's going to cause our pain. I want to share with you something that I do in my own life. Every day when I leave for work or I drop my kids to school, I make a mental note that this could be the last time that I see my wife or my children. And what this allows me to do is to realize how temporary and fragile life really is. But this sort of acceptance only really starts when we become comfortable with the idea that we ourselves one day are going to die. One of the things that I do every single morning when I wake up is I repeat to myself, today could be the day that I die. And I know that if I say that to myself every single day, one day it's actually going to come true. I just don't know when. Now I know you may be thinking that that's a really morbid, depressing or pessimistic way to look at life but that's not been my experience. When you're aware of the reality 
that you're going to lose everything around you, you gain something amazing. You gain the divine perspective. You gain this freedom, this bliss that comes from knowing that everything around you is temporary. And in fact, this is how we're going to practice this wisdom. It really isn't too late to start. For you to understand that every single day is something to be cherished is a great and healing, powerful way for you to move forward in your own life. When you understand that every person that you're going to come across is someone who you need to cherish in that moment. In fact, when we realize that every single breath is one that has to be given away, then we start to see it as a blessing. We start to realize that every single moment is a gift because we're aware that death is flying around and hovering over our heads. And at any time it can come down and take us or the people around us. And it's so easy when we are mourning the loss of our loved ones to focus on those who have gone. And when we do that, we can actually ignore the people that we still have around us. We take them for granted. And when you do that, you make the same mistake again of assuming that they're also going to be around forever, that there is this false sense of stability or permanence in your life. And this isn't the way the wisdom teaches us to focus on relationships. The wisdom shows us that all relationships will come to an end. The death of your loved one now becomes a moment of awakening. Their death is like a loud alarm clock that's going off, waking you up, reminding you that you placed your hopes in the wrong thing. You relied on your loved one being there all the time, and as long as they were there, that's how you were going to be happy. But in the end, that relationship did not last. So instead, we need to place our hopes on a higher truth. And that truth is that nothing will last and we need to cherish every single moment that we have, cherish every relationship that we have. Each morning that we wake up isn't something that we should take lightly. In fact, we should be grateful for this miracle of life that we get to experience. When you're grieving, missing your loved one shouldn't mean missing out on life. And you know, it's okay. It's okay to want joy in your life, to want hope, to look forward to new relationships. And none of this means that you're being disloyal to your loved one. And when you're grieving, you're going to have setbacks. There are going to be times where you're going up and down on this emotional roller coaster. And that's okay too. Every time we experience pain, it doesn't mean that we have to start all over again. It just means that for a moment, we want to crawl back into our cave and close ourselves from the outside world because that's a familiar place to be. And that's okay for a short while. But at some point, we need to let that light back in. That light of higher wisdom. Because our loved one's journey may have come to an end. But we shouldn't let that stop us from missing out on whatever time we have left. Have a go at answering the following questions, either by writing down the answers or discussing them in your groups. Do you feel that you allow yourself to have good days where the pain is lessened? Name some other major changes in your life that you had the strength to overcome. What does the future without your loved one look like for you? Has your experience of this group helped you? If so, how? I really hope that you've been able to benefit from some of the wisdom that we've shared in this series. Grief can be such a personal journey, and it's important that we take our time with it and that we don't judge ourselves. There are going to be times when we feel like discussing our emotions with a group and there are going to be other times where we just want to be left alone. And that's okay too. If it helps, feel free to watch these lessons again and again in your own time. And I hope 
that you can use the wisdom of the Guru to guide you back to a place of peace and love within your own heart.